Hello everybody, my name is Super Oak from Aki Design and welcome to my seminar about size coding using processing. Now before we get started, let's look at processing itself. Processing is an application that allows you to write simple graphical programs. It's been around since 2001 and used by students and professionals alike. This is the processing website. From here we can download our software, it's available for Linux, macOS and Windows and once downloaded and installed, you can launch the software and you'll be greeted with an empty program, also called an empty sketch. Programming in processing is done via the Java language. There are other language options available, but for our size coding purposes, we'll stick to Java. Now to get something on screen, we we'll need at least one function, which is called the draw function. And in the draw function, we can draw some primitives. For example, a black background and on top of that we'll draw a circle at coordinates 50 50 with a radius of 25. We'll press our play button and voila here's a white circle on a black background. We can see that our David window size is a bit small it's 100 by 100 pixels. So if we want to make that a bit larger we'll need to add a second function this is called our setup function and from there call the size command. For example, 480 by 270. Press play again, and indeed our canvas is larger. And our circle is still here. Let's recenter the circle a bit and make it a bit larger. Here we go. Now, what if we want to add a little animation to this? Well, it's pretty easy. We have a variable called frame count that has the number of frames in it since launching of the program. We modulo that and here we have a little James Bond animation go. Well, this is processing in a nutshell. Now how can we use this for size code? So to start, let's try to create a simple pixel effect. And for that, we need to write a for loop that loops around all the pixels on the screen, starting with a Y loop, we'll do the same for the X, close the loop, and we need to draw a pixel on every position, we'll do that using the point command, but we still need to set the color as well. So to do that, we'll need the stroke command and here we'll set the color. For example, XX plus YY, let's see if we get a diagonal gradient, indeed we have that. And let's add our own time variable to this. So we create a variable called T, it's a global variable, and we'll increase that ourselves. And we should have a slowly moving gradient here, which indeed we have. Now, as every demo scene knows, one of the first effects you can try to create is a gradient or plasma-like effect. So let's add a smaller number to T and add some sine functions to this. And we'll make it full RGB. Like this. You need to scale it up because the RGB value still needs to be between 0 and 255. And indeed, we have some gradients going. Add T to that. And it looks something like a plasma. So, this should be good enough to get you up and running. Now, let's try a little different effect and for that we need to recenter our coordinate system to the center of the screen and we'll do that by making new variables and subtract a half of the width and half of the height of the screen and let's try to try to make a z variable which would be something like this And 
let's see if we can draw the Z variable. And here we have the distance to the center of the screen. Now from here, of course, we can write a tunnel effect or even a floor effect. Uh, but let's try uh, something a little different. Let's multiply the X by the Z and do a logical operation on the Y by the Z. Uh, and this won't work because this is a logical operation. So we'll need to cast these floats to integers. And we'll do that using the int function. See if this works. Mm, let's try this. Yeah, we're up and running. Let's make the R and the G uh, zero, so we'll only work with the blue channel. Should have a blue effect here. It's barely visible. Now add the value, the T value. And it should be moving, if I'm not mistaken. Let's make this a larger number. Here we go. Not much motion happening yet. Let's make. And indeed, we have a little animation going. This looks like a proper demo effect. At least it does to me. So. This is all good and well, but this isn't sized optimized. So how do we know how large our program is and what is our product program exactly? Well, to do that, we need to copy the code and save it locally. For example, I'll call this lovebyte.pde, which is the default sketch format. You can save it directly from the IDE or you can save it externally. I'll save it externally so I can look at the file size, which is at 311 characters because PDE file indeed is just a raw text file. Okay, we'll go back to the editor and see what we can do to optimize this. We can move some white spaces in the setup function. We'll do a bit of the same in the draw function. Works nice. And stick these four loops together. See where we're at. Can we move all the white space here. And of course, we don't have to use the type for each and every variable we declare. So we can combine them like this. Keep the stroke functionality. Keep the point functionality. Let's see if it still works. It does. Okay, let's check our size again. Just save it on top of this. And we're at 209 characters or bytes. Oh, this is beautiful. This, you can already submit this if you'd like to. Let's see if there are things we can do to make it still a bit smaller. But we still see the float, float and float being declared uh, at different points in the program. So what we can do, we can make these variables global, just like T. So we remove this and we say okay what we need we had a t we had an x and y a z we had xx and yy can we do it like this and now we've moved all the types at a single place just stick the setup function there still works great let's check it again Two nine. Now we're at two or one. Still something said. So is there something else we can do? Uh, probably. Uh, so 
for example, these for loops can be written uh, like this. It saves a bit of space. Still working. Saving again. And we should be below 200. Is there something else we can do? Yes, you can write it as a single for loop and extract the X and Y from there. Uh, that will make your program a bit smaller. And uh, my estimate is that if you make it small enough, it should be around 150 characters. And that should get you your first demo scene effect. The good thing is that PDE files are accepted at LoveBite. They're accepted at a few other parties, Inertia. Uh, and you can just uh, send them as a PDE. They can be launched within processing and they can be run directly. And you have your demo effect up and running. So that's pretty cool. But is there something else that we can do and are there more functions that we can use? Oh, for sure. Let's look at the documentation. It has a reference. It has some general Java functionality. We have a millis function that returns the number of milliseconds. We have some mouse and inputs, some constants. We can use and draw text using uh, the text function. We can set some alignment and size and width. We can use uh, something called set and update pixels to update our pixels directly, which is interesting for demo scene effects. And here are some primitives we can draw. Arc, circle, ellipse, line, point, quad, rectangle, square, triangle, and some more complex shape if we want. But this should give you a good start. Now I mentioned also there's a, like a JavaScript variant. It's known as P5.js, you might have heard of it. It's basically the same thing, just using JavaScript as its primary language and even has an online editor or is available as an optional mode within processing. So you can use that, but it's not as efficient for size coding because it generates an HTML file that is way too big to submit anywhere. Now, this is good and well. You can do your uh, pixel effects. You can even optimize them. But can we do something more advanced like shaders? Well, yes, you can. There's actually a shader P shader that we can use. You can load it externally, which we can for uh, size coding purposes, but we can also initialize the shader ourselves with uh, GLSL code. So let's go ahead and try that and see if we can get a shader up and running. We need to have a setup function where we'll launch the shader and of course the draw function that will use the shader. To launch a shader, we need to have a, a vertex shader and a fragment shader. And we'll do that by creating a string for the vertex shader, or rather an array of strings. And the same for the... And then we need to initialize our window or canvas. And we do that using the size function. And we need to let processing know that we are dealing with an open window. And we'll do that by either using a P2D or P3D option to the size functionality. And then of course we need to initialize our shader. So we say, say S is new, P shader, this V F. And for using the shader, you can either use shader S uh, and then draw something, for example, a circle using that shader, or we can shortcut it and just say filter S, which will try to apply in a filter on the entirety of the canvas. Let's see if this does not crash, <laughs> and it doesn't, but of course there's no shader code there yet, so we can't expect any shader to work at all. So let's uh, fill our shaders. 
first we'll start with some global that's the same between both shaders for example version 150 uh, we have an in position and end back forward position uh, we'll have an out back four frag color and let's add our own uniform T to that and yeah let's go with this we'll add G to both the uh, shaders we'll have a main function for the vertex shader that will that geo position is position minus dot five which is a little hack i found that you could use for that and we'll try to do the same for the fragment shader and this case we'll try to fill frag color with red and see if this will work and indeed we have a red window this is perfect so uh let's parse our position so back to p would be uh gl frac chord x y divided by a fixed resolution so let's take half of our resolution here uh, and then minus one should work um, and we can use multi-line if we want to like this and see if we can get a gradient going perfect now what do we need we need to fill our uniform t uh, we can do that in the draw function so we say s set t and we need to fit it with for example millis divided by uh, float divided by a thousand uh, let's see if that works Yes, now yeah, let's use T. Perfect. So, is there anything we can do to optimize this? First, let's save it, see what we're at. I say shader.pde. Of course, this is going to be quite large. 397, almost at 400. I'm sure we can crunch that down a bit. Kill some of the white space here. You can do it like that. Boom. As you can see, the setup and the draw function are pretty optimal at the moment. Uh, but at least uh, get this white space going. Is there something else we can do? Of course, uh, we have a main function here that is split between uh, both the vertex and the fragment shader so we'll stick that in G and see if this still works it does perfect let's stick this here see where we're at perfect save this shader And about 350 bytes will get you up and running with shaders. And from here on in, uh, it's going to be your uh, shader code that uh, makes or breaks uh, the intro. So yeah, uh, this is it for me. Uh, I hope you've learned something. You can see that uh, processing is a viable option for size coding, uh, as well for shading coding. I mean, with uh, Windows and Linux binaries, uh, you constantly have a moving target where your intro might not work uh, tomorrow. And uh, hopefully processing will be, uh, has been around since 2001 and it will be around for 
a bit longer. So uh, yeah, this could help you get started with processing. Love Byte accepts entries, I'm sure other parties will as well. If you want to know more, um, most of the things I've uh, talked about in this seminar is available on sizecoding.org. Uh, I've made a wiki page for processing. It has all the setup, getting started, video display, the primitives you can draw, getting something on screen, text handling, shader code, sound. Uh, is sound possible? Well, not via processing because it needs an external library. But there are things that you can do using Java uh, libraries, but they take uh, quite a bit of setup. So it's not optimal for sound, but uh, there are some other optimization tricks which I haven't talked about. And what you can do to uh, do final optimization uh, and release your package for demo parties. Well, I hope you enjoyed the seminar and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.